farewell to Donna McEwen there and uh, look forward to taking his interest in mental well-being a stage further. Now, delighted to be joined by Thelma and John McKnight, uh, Rath Ryland folk, That's yes? Right, yeah. And you're in the shop in Mary Street, uh, uh, the Indian shop there where you're helping people, you're raising money to help with projects in India. Seek and find. Seek and find, yes. How long, is the, how long have you been interested in this charity? It's something you found it yourselves. Yes. From your deep oh, heart's core well, kind of job. The whole lot started, we were invited. I was invited to go to India by a neighbour man who had been, and I take photographs, so he invited me out to go with him, see around, take photographs. When I was there, as you know yourself, I saw poverty. Yeah. We don't know what the word poverty means, so we came home, and wife and I decided, wonder could we do anything to help these people out here? So we got photographs and got a few sponsor a child. Yeah. Here we are, 13, 14 years later, still going. And, and the family's family. growing out and in India, big family. Big family in India. Yeah. So tell me what you mean by that, big family in India. Well, we started off with 74 orphan children, with now 3,610. So where are those uh, orphan children? You know the names no. better than I where do. Where are they? <laughs> uh, Andhra Pradesh, we work in the Andhra, Andhra Pradesh, Pradesh area, yes. which is a huge area, much bigger even than the, the whole of Ireland. Yes. Uh, these kids uh, are looked after by a man called Jacob, uh, who is Indian. Uh, he met three kids one day, they were living under a tree and he just felt in his heart, I have to do something to help these mm. children. Mm. So he brought the three kids home to his wife who was very upset because they didn't have enough rice to feed themselves and here Jacob was arriving home with three children but that was way back in 1994 and it started from there, he had a passion for children. So uh, as John said we now have 3,600 orphans are they scattered the all across the yeah, area? Yeah, they're in 24 orphanages, all run by Goodness gracious. this this man, Jacob. And um, the biggest orphanage has over a thousand children. Yes. So, you it's know, it's, it's a big work. That's big. A big so you, were, you came there and you were aware of this. And uh, uh -huh. a mighty enough thing for two ordinary folk, dare I say, good yeah. people from the countryside of, of County Down, and you saw this and you went, we're going to do something. Yeah, well, when John came home in 2001, he was telling me all about it and we Lots thought, of pictures. Yeah, we have to do something about this. So we had car boot sales, the usual round of fundraising things. Yes, yeah. And we were doing that for quite a few years, sending the money out. Then we have a sponsor a child program here in Northern Ireland where you can sponsor <coughs> a child with us. You get updates twice a year and that helps provide for their food, their education and their upkeep. And significantly, and we're, you and I would be acutely aware of this, uh, we, it, we're a direct conduit to the people who yes. need the help. There's no, there's no fancy cars and big no, administration, no. No, no. nothing like no. that. No. Well, it's just hard work. That's the, the thing. We are a small charity, but in that, exactly as you say, there is no big managers, nobody's getting a big cut out of it. What we raise here in Northern Ireland goes straight to India. Mm. We have been, I first went out then in 2003, John had told me all about it, we saw the pictures and the video, but once I went and seen it for myself, it was just yeah. such an eye-opener. So you touched down in India, where did you arrive, Chennai or? Uh, Hyderabad. Hyderabad, uh -huh. yeah, you flew into Hyderabad. Uh -huh. And, and tell then, me, as the doors of the airport, the airplane opened, the Refryland woman comes <laughs> down the steps. <laughs> what, 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 were you, what were the sensations that took I, you over? I have been to India quite a few times from that, but I will never forget that, that one experience. When, you, when the doors of the airplane opened, the first thing is the heat and the dust. And then as I went through the airport, I saw people lying on the ground, sleeping, rolled up in, not even blankets, bits of cloth, actually sleeping there for shelter. People were begging with children around them with dirty faces, and you just knew they had nothing. Just the initial walking through the airport was a big, big surprise. Uh, in them days, in 2003, they didn't have a computer system, mm. so your suitcase came out through a hole in the wall. If yeah. you were lucky, it came out through a hole if in the wall. Uh, you had to stand and get all these forms filled in, and it was a very slow process. Then when you came out through, as you probably know, uh, 
if in India you're leaving a family member to the airport, the whole family goes to oh, leave yes, that member. absolutely. It used to be the case in Ireland. <laughs> well, I suppose, <laughs> we're say, yeah. When we were, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we came out through the doors to see this sea of faces. And we just felt completely out of place, completely <laughs> lost, and afraid that we would never get any further. The gardens of flowers. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, and yeah, then the Pastor Jacob and, he, and his friends that came to meet us, you know, present us with these yeah. garlands of flowers, which they had kept in a bucket to keep them fresh. Keep them fresh for so you. they were in a bucket of water, they just lifted them out of the bucket of the water and threw them straight over our oh, heads. You're, so we you got a shower. <laughs> Welcome to India shower. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely yeah, amazing. Fantastic. So when you've made first contact with the orphans, uh, what was the what was the sensation of that, and how did they greet you, and oh. what did you feel upon the greeting? Well, Salma wasn't so bad, but they sort of took a look at me, for back then I had red hair. <laughs> you were a bit of an oddity. I, yeah, it was a sort of an oddity, and when they took a look at me, they went like, oh, hey, and <laughs> then they came over, touched me, and then it was hugs and hugs kisses. And kisses but and it was all good. Salma loved kids, yeah. and we were just mommy and daddy to everyone, to everybody. within 10 minutes. Yeah. I was, I was quite worried how I would communicate with them yes. because of the language difference. Yeah. And I worked with kids for 14 years. I was a childminder, so I love children. And But my worry ongoing the first time was, how am I going to communicate? They mm. won't know what. But children are children anywhere yeah. in the world. It's an interesting and they thought. watch your face, they yeah. watch your hand signals, and they can read it like a book. Mm. But the most important thing is the hug. They just want hugs and yeah. kisses and to be the center of your world for them few minutes. Yes. And yes. the girls all come running. The boys stand to the side. I have a thing about wee boys anyway. But I was watching the boys thinking, oh, they don't want to be. But as I progressed over to them and started to play with them, they wanted hugs and kisses even more than the girls did. Yeah. So yeah. it's building up little relationships. Little trust. What, I have to ask you, what's your motivation for doing this? Well, Is it a Christian motivation? Partly, yes, I suppose. Yeah. But just the... As I say, I love ki kids. We just love helping people, even here in our yeah, own area. Humanitarian and, yeah, outreach as well. Maybe God has put that in our hearts. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's a good chance of that. But yeah. it's just that, just being able to help, to, to lift a kid on your knee, I mean, and give it a hug. Maybe that child hasn't had that experience mm -hmm. because the parents die when these kids are young. And just to be able to go in and do that, to let a child feel that it's worthy to be loved. Mm. You know, to me, gives us much more than what we give them. Like the, there's help needed in your own country. Just going over the fence and visiting the neighbour. Mm -hmm. Which we do help someone. Well, I think I think so that's a huge can. thing because yes. people will often say uh, charity begins at home. But nowadays, in a world where we're going to Mars, we already have vehicles on Mars. Yep. Mm -hmm. Home is the entire planet. That's right. That's it. Yeah. And if a child is hurting in India, mm -hmm. that child is our neighbour and right. needs to be lifted and looked yeah. after. Like and says, it's a small world. It's a small world indeed. Yeah, you know, sometimes people say to us, you know, why, why do you do it? Should this, you know, if these ch people have all these children, why oh. don't they just look after them? But it's not that they have loads of children that they no. can't look after. The parents die very, very young That's right. from simple things like Say you take a bug today, vomiting mm. and diarrhea, mm. and you haven't can, got money for treatment. That can take you. That can take mm. you. If mm. you have a road accident, you mm. haven't got money for treatment. Yeah. An injury can just bring... So the parents are dying very young. That's why there's so many orphans. And what people don't always recognize and realize is that in these economies, uh, these uh, agricultural societies across the world, people need lots of children to do the work on the farm mm -hmm. to look after the old folk when they when that's they right. grow old and uh, that's all that's all part and parcel of the reason so you you became naturally hooked out of your own humanity you came back to Ireland and you looked in the direction of Newry and you saw a place in Mary Street mm -hmm. that would be the shop well it was bigger you know um, could I do it would I do it uh, I had a job at the time and I thought, well, I really want to do mm. this. Mm. So one day a friend suggested we had a stall in Newry Market, which mm. we did. We had a terrific day meeting people. We had a wonderful day's crack and we made, I think, over £600 that particular day. That's very good, yes. And that was the start of it. So then I thought, well, really, I want to continue this. So I gave up my job and I started doing 
a stall in Newry Market on a Thursday and a Saturday. So that's yes. how it started. Yes. And all the while looking for a shop, I was praying about it. And um, then we put an advertisement in the paper and the shop in Mary Street came up. Yeah. So that's how so we ended know, up yeah. there. And it's right beside the market. It which is, of course, and you have the yeah. flow of the market yeah. to you. Yeah. And people are getting to know about you more and more. Yes. Well, you know. Yes. And you call the shop Seek, seek and find. find. Seek. Seek and find. So what kind of things will we seek and will we find in your shop? You can seek nearly anything really? <laughs> on any given day when I it's like Christmas for me every day when I open all the black bags that come in and see all the, the bric a brac and clothes, yeah. all sorts of things. And sometimes I put things on the shelf and I think, Will anybody want that? And maybe in two days' time, a customer will come in and say, oh, I've been looking for one of them for months. <laughs> and there it is. So you can find all sorts of things in a charity yeah. shop. People ask me, uh, what do you take, Joe? We have this, we have this. I have a strange answer to that. We take everything except second-hand husbands <laughs> and kids <laughs> and wives. We've and been offered a few of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> First time I advertised, I was offered two husbands and three kids. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so we, we don't want those. No, you have to laugh, don't you? Yeah, really? yeah, Humour yeah. gets us through. Humour, you know, and yeah. even in India, you know, they, they have, at the start, they didn't understand our humour. But as time yeah. progressed, you know, we start to have yeah. fun with them. And I heard you, 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 you made a reference there that you prayed about it. Yes. So God is still coming through in you. Yeah. Well, personally, in my life and John's life, um, God is number one. Yeah. And I don't do anything unless I've consulted him first. Yeah. And um, you feel that you're doing his will. Well, when you go to India and you see what the money you've helped raise is doing, yeah. you just get a peace. You know, yes. and um, I just believe God's in it. And Pastor Jacob that we're talking about, I mean, he gave up everything mm. to start this orphanage. Mm. Now he also works in 24 leper colonies. Goodness gracious. Now this yeah. is something that's very, very close to our heart as well. Lepers, you know, yeah. A leper, leprosy and colony. And have you encountered people with leprosy? Oh yes, we have Hundreds. been in. That's the, not easy for well, you. Well, it's amazing too. Um, when I first went to India in 2003 and Jacob said, right, tomorrow we're going to visit a leper colony. Yes. I had visualized a dark, dingy place with men. My only thought was men mm. sitting in dark corners. Mm. Mm. But mm. when you go to a leprosy colony, what it basically is, is a small village, which mm. is they are ostracized and they have to live away from mm. the main mm. town. Mm. But it's a village of men, women and children. Yes. And it's just to them everyday mm. life and they're so happy and contented mm. with what they get if they're fed today they're quite happy mm. see i thought uh, it strikes me in africa as well uh, there is a happiness depression is unknown yes uh, suicide yeah. is unheard of uh -huh. all of the, this is a, a marvelous circumstance that these yeah. people are in uh -huh. uh, and of course the children that you're talking about the children of the the leper families mm -hmm. those children may not start off with leprosy no no but no. it's uh, it's uh, they, they become uh, infected quite quickly, yeah, I should think. You know? Leprosy, I think the earliest case ever recorded was a six month old child, mm -hmm. and the, mm -hmm. the oldest one was a man in his late 60s or something mm -hmm. before they took the disease. Mm -hmm. But when you go to a leper colony, they stand back, they look at you, and you put out your hand, and they meet you with this. Yeah, yeah of course, the, the fingers have gone. You hold their hand, look in their eyes, there's tears. People have come thousands of miles. They've shook my hand. They've held me. We sat and we eat with them. Well, this yeah. was something that never happened before. Mm. And then we were looking forward to put a mobile clinic on the road, mm. like an ambulance, but mobile mm -hmm. clinic. And we tried to get one, and there's a man in County Down, not far from home. He bought us one. My goodness. Twelve thousand pounds. Yeah. Not a problem. And you bought her out there. Yeah. Bought her yeah. out there. That's she what was, makes sense. Yep. A she Mahindra. Was, she was on the road and she visits about three hundred people every day. That's fantastic. Now not people with broken arms and cures. Yeah. Leprosy, yeah. yeah. Just leprosy, colds, coughs, simple mm. little things mm. that we take for granted. It kills them out there. Mm. I've been out with the ambulance, bandaged their feet, took off shoes and socks. Toes gone, mm. soles of their feet eaten away, sides of their feet eaten away. You're looking straight in mm. at the bone. The smell is yeah. something different. Oh, yeah, of course. Bandaging yeah. them up and sending them on their way. That's all we can really do. But for you mean them. You're, you're greatly blessed in that particular challenge because mm. 
to put yourself beyond your comfort zone makes you yeah. a stronger person. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah. definitely. And mm -hmm. it makes yep. you realize, you know, really what we have here, people complain if they have to sit in the doctor's surgery for more than 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I've been here too long and, you know, and yet we are blessed with this mm -hmm. wonderful health service that we should be grateful and for. everything paid for. Absolutely. You know, yeah. but uh, as John says, going into the leprosy colony and they come with their babies and they hold them out to you to see will you accept them and to take their babies off them and hold them and many people in the Newry area here crocheted small baby blankets for me the last on our last trip in 2012 and I was able to to give them to some of the ladies in the leprosy colony and they were just overwhelmed to be given a gift of a lovely blanket to wa wrap their baby in you know mm. such humbling it's the most humbling experience yeah. in the world I find I find what you're doing uh, both humbling and uh, hugely enriching uh, I, I, I'm perturbed a wee bit when I see some of the larger charity ads on television and uh, very well-known charities I have to say where there is a minute and a half of a dramatic piece yeah. showing a child dying yeah. and the voice says and there's music behind it to give you the dramatic sensation mm -hmm. and the voice said little Emma uh, can't ask you yeah. blah 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 and they're plucking I said go away stop it just give me the story you don't have yes. to dramatize it yeah. and these big ads do that mm -hmm. and they pay fortunes to get them made and get oh, them presented sure. but you guys in your way you're small enough to put your arms around to embrace mm. the project and that's that's important I wouldn't want to be involved in something that I couldn't be hands-on in yeah you know just to, to raise money and mm. pass it on and not know what it's doing yeah. I, I couldn't and very do it. often it'll do the right thing you know yes but, if, oh, if, most if these big charities spend for talk's sake if they yeah. if they if they have a million on administration maybe they'll make a hundred million that's and that's it. fine that's yeah. fine but you I think to. I think that folk folk like us we need to feel mm -hmm. that we have some sort of connection yes. with the other side, yeah. with the people who are getting the thing. Because that's what motivates you, that's yeah. what keeps you going, that's is right. to be able to go and see right. and come home then and be refreshed to yeah. start again. When will you go back to India? Oh, well, what's the plan? whenever we can afford it, basically. Yeah. I mean, we pay our own way, we of don't, course. it doesn't come out of charity funds or anything, so it's difficult at the minute. Mm. Uh, as you know, air flights, everything's gone up. But what, 700 to get there? Maybe? The last time I went, it Return. was £1,240 for the two of us. Wow, yeah. Yeah. the two of you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, yeah. even visas, everything's gone up yeah. so much now, yeah. you know. But yeah. we will, we will be back. We will be back. Oh, what we will. have to get through to the people that's watching this today is, it's our charity. We have two or three ladies do all the book work for yeah, us. Yeah. Yeah. We the do the groundwork. They do it for nothing. Administration fees zero. Absolutely. A yeah. holiday for Thelma and I is totally more care of for the weekend. <laughs> That's a great break. You're <laughs> wonderful people. So, yeah. Well, no, we're just we just as I say, they give us much more than we give them. You but know? it's always the case. Mm -hmm. yep. But I mean, that's of course not why you do it. No, Pe no. I, people sometimes say it's in giving that you receive. Uh, you don't do it to receive. No, you do it because no. somewhere in your DNA, either a God or your mothers and fathers or a God through your mothers and fathers said, this is the right thing for you to do. Yeah. That's why you do it. And that's you know, we get asked the question too, but you know, where is God? Why does God let these people suffer? So we can't answer that. We can't answer it, but I believe we're, if everyone gave a few pounds to a charity, yeah. everyone, the whole world would be covered. There wouldn't be these people starving. Right. So it That's is right. up to us. We can't pan it off on yeah. God all the no. time. It well, is God, up to God's us. maybe whispering to us, yes. and we're not listening, yeah. or we're not hearing. We're not hearing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but I mean, we, we try, we torture ourselves with those big questions. Yeah, yeah. when there like, is no answer. When there is no answer. No. Because I, you know, I'm, I'm paying a bit of attention to the Alpha course in Uri at the moment, oh, Kingsley. Yeah. Uh -huh. Kingsley Sutton is, is running it. And uh, there's one thing comes through when you peel the, the, the skin off the onion, uh -huh. uh, you come down through it. There's the, the, the love factor in the middle. Yes. And that's what Very it's about. Nice. So and don't. Don't torment yourself no, for these no. huge no. questions no, you can't I don't. answer. I do what, what, yeah, I feel. what you think is right. Yeah. For years I've been wondering. What can I do? And you get Aye. yourself a job and you're happy and then you're thinking, there's got to be more to... Oh, I, I have found mine. Yeah, you Some have found her. Yeah. We're yeah. happy. Just that wee email with a picture attached to it. Kids yeah. done it. Thank you for our yeah. Christmas yeah. 
treats or whatever, whatever, something whatever like it is. That. Yeah. We were saying, yes. Right. It's working well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's worth yeah. months of age. And were you guys, did, did you guys, this all started new for you out of the blue. You had never done anything like oh, this no. previously. No, 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 no. Yeah. no. I always wanted to visit Africa, funny enough. You mm. know, when I'd heard people talk about being to Africa. So did I, yeah. And uh, I always thought, oh, I'd love to go to Africa someday, but mm. I went to India, which Found is India. the same, only different, really. The colours and the, f yeah. the, colors and the food and Wonderful. the signs and whatever. Wonderful. That was her very first big break. That was I my first I took her and landed her to India. What an experience. You were very kind to her. <laughs> I was so kind. I thought, I'll give you an experience. I like got it. Yeah. He could have lost you there, but yeah, he could have. The, the mos You've mosquitoes been over there or whatever. Yourself, you know uh, what yeah. the like. I mean, the colours. So, <laughs> the horns go all the time. That's right. And, and then you're walking right, right before you come around the corner, and there's an elephant in yeah. full regalia <laughs> comes round and faces you. Or a few goats or, 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 goats, or, or you have a you have a, a monkey god walking down yeah. the street, yes. a man dressed as a monkey, and whatever. Goodness like gracious. Pastor Jacob says, if you don't pray. Two mile down the road in Jeep, you will be praying. <laughs> you get too far. Two mile down the road. But they never yeah. seem to crash. So they keep yeah. going. Well, we saw, we last time we were some, there, we yeah. saw an awful... Oh, I, oh yeah. I can still see it in my mind's eye. Just mm. people on the road and, oh, it, when they do crash, it's horrendous. It's bad. It's because bad the crash. autos are, you know, full of people. And full of people. No doors in the yeah. back. And yeah, yeah. Those are the wee taxi autos, yeah. the wee yellow yeah, jobs. The, wee yellow things, the yeah. three wheel jobs, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So at the minute, we're uh, we're putting on a concert in Newry Town Hall. When is that? This is on the 8th of March. 8th of March. The Belfast Community Gospel Choir. The Belfast Community Gospel yeah, Choir. It's a, a tremendous choir, and uh, this is their first time coming to Newry. Right. And all the money raised at this. The tickets are fifteen pound, which some people are saying is a lot of money. Well, but sure, that is fifteen it? pound is going for this mobile clinic. We must keep it on the road. It's yeah. essential we keep it on the road. Yeah. And it takes about a thousand pound a month to keep it on the road with diesel. There's a doctor, yeah. uh, two nurses on it and driver. a driver. Yeah. And this is what the concert's for. So we need people to to support us on this okay. one. Okay, and have you started publicising it yet? Oh yes, we have it. It's been in the local papers. We yes. have flyers just about everywhere. Mm. And um, the town hall have been very good. We've so you have the gospel choir, and is yeah. it the full concert? They'll be singing for the full yes, concert. Yes, they'll be yeah. still singing for okay. the full concert, yeah. Now the gospel choir is, we don't want people thinking they're going to be sitting and praise the Lord. Oh, no, no, it's, it's not. It's it is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, well, I crack. think I know the kind of choir yeah. it would be. Yeah, yeah. Cross community, yeah. they're very lively and yeah. interact with the audience. <laughs> it it yeah. will definitely be a good night. It sounds good to me, uh -huh. and that's on the 8th of March. That's Saturday the 8th of so March. Saturday, I'll tell you a ticket now before we go. <laughs> well, will you sell me two? I will. Not yeah. a problem. <laughs> okay. Have Let's go for the checkbook. I'll take two tickets from you. That's a done deal. There's no problem. I will come to see you at your shop. Thank you. Because I haven't been in your shop All yet. Right, okay. And I so much look forward to going in there Good. Uh, and to see what's happening. So the, the greatest thing that you've seen achieved in India as a consequence of your caring is what? There's so many things. Uh, what's the one that jumps out in your mind? I'm I glad we did that. I suppose the school was quite a, an achievement because yep. um, the orphans get a, a first-class education, but Jacob had to yeah. pay to send them to school. Mm -hmm. So um, he, I don't know, that was way back maybe in 2004? Three or four or something. He said if he could build a school, he mm -hmm. would be able to, you know, instead of paying out the money every month yes. to, to educate yes. the orphans. So we were trying to raise funds for this school, and then one day a check came through our front door with the right amount of money <laughs> to build this uh, school. Paid in full. So uh, that in itself was tremendous, and on our next trip to India, <coughs> this school was built next, we stay in the orphanage, and this school was built right next door. We watched in the morning as these kids came running up the lane, so happy that they could go to school. Plus, he had found a couple of minibuses that needed repair. He had repaired them, and he sent them down into the village to get children mm. that parents couldn't afford to send them to school and they were brought up to school and there was just these buses arriving these kids jumping off mm. and it's just amazing to think mm. that wasn't there before mm. and here it is and these children's getting a first class education Absolutely. some of the older orphans are now at nursing college <laughs> they're getting a first class education they can go anywhere in the world mm. you know from being living on the streets, maybe getting battered because they were trying to steal food, 
Mm. These kids have grown up. They can go anywhere in the world they want to go. Goodness gracious. So that, that has been another achievement. That would be the biggest one. And the next one for me would be the mobile clinic. Yeah. I yeah. work for... And that's coming out of the little van that you bought. Yes, uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. Mm. That was brilliant for... I work for an organisation that... Well, they teach first aid, put it like that. Ah, yes. Uh, Houston John Ambulance. No, British Red Cross. Oh, sure, no, the Red Cross. But yeah. we go You do great things across the world. They yeah. do great things. And for us to have this little ambulance on the road, mm -hmm. treating two to three hundred people a day. Yeah. <laughs> That's and unbelievable. We've been out with it, and you yeah. see a queue way down, and they only come for a wee tablet. Yeah. I'll never forget the first injection I saw one of them getting away <laughs> in the back of the yard. The poor man, needle in the hip. The look on that man's face. He was terrified. He'd he never seen terrified. a needle before. He'd never seen a needle before in his life. It was an experience. Oh, goodness. The school and that, that just and everything. Your credit, yes. There go. was one other day we were waiting with the ambulance and we were watching these people queue up and I noticed these two men sitting on the ground. Oh. And the nurse left the, the they have a table in front of the ambulance and the, all their medication on it. And she left her table and she went round and she started to unwind this bandage. And for me, that was my mm. first big glimpse of leprosy. This mm. man's foot was just, the whole sole of his foot was just eaten away. Mm. And he sat there smiling at me. And I just, I went over and I put my arm around him and I said something like, you're still smiling anyway. And he just burst into tears. And Jacob explained to me later, he wasn't crying because of his foot. He was crying because I hugged him. He had never had contact with people like that before. That and we a, just sat mm. there and it was just that wee moment where here was I, as you say, just an ordinary wee woman from Rathbrynland. Well, there, are no, there are no ordinary wee women in <laughs> Rathbrynland. <laughs> no, you're 7, good. 7,000 miles, miles from home. From home with this Indian man with half his foot missing. And it was like mm. just that moment I just hugged him. And every time I go back now, I look for him. His name's Samuel. And I look for Samuel and... You look down the crowd, and the last, uh, the time before the last on our, our trip, uh, he couldn't walk up to me, and I couldn't understand, but he had to have that leg amputated mm. at the knee because the, foot, the infection got so bad. And uh, so he was in a wheelchair, so I went round down to the wheelchair, and I gave him his hug, and he was looking up at me, and he was trying to tell me all about what had happened to his leg, and it was heartbreaking. But... In 2012, in January, again we went to his leprosy colony and I was looking for Samuel. And he came walking out of the crowd towards me and I'm like, <laughs> Samuel? You've grown a new leg. <laughs> he had this new plastic, now it was yes. a plastic yes. leg, but it was enough to let him be able to walk up to me. Yes. And just to see the progress there, you know, again was tremendous. You know, so I gave him this big hug and uh, Pastor Jacob said to me afterwards, you know, Sister Thelma, Ladies don't hug men in oh. India, in public. <laughs> I said, well, I'm very sorry, Jacob, but I couldn't help uh, it's not, well, it's good. So it's, it's good. good. You know, we have that friendship. Yeah, that. it's very beautiful. Yep. Wish you well. Find these guys at Seek and Find, uh, number 18 Mary Street in yeah. Uri. Uh, please go down and check them out. And then on the 8th of March, on the Saturday evening at the Town Hall in Uri, We'll be at the concert there with the Belfast Gospel Choir. And you can find us on, what's the find Facebook Find us on thing? Facebook. We have a new Facebook page. Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> you can see all our, our photographs. Seek and find India. You'll see all our photos of the leprosy and the kids. And there's, I just put new photographs up yesterday of the kids getting their Christmas gifts. Uh, okay. So it's, it's lovely. So go on, have a wee look. Seek and find India. Yeah. That's on Facebook. Yeah. Thank you for coming in. You've Not been great. Pleasure, and we wish you a good luck. Thank you Take very care. much. All nice the best to you. Bye-bye. All the best, John. Take God care. Bless you. God Thank bless you. you. Take care.